Learn how easy it is to move a population mm -hmm. out of fear. The Bush administration called upon Congress to make a decision to vote on the Iraq war, which really wasn't a war, it was, it's an occupation, the Iraq invasion. And the, uh, the uh, bill was debated in October 2002. And you can see the Congress, House and Senate members, many of whom stood to read the White House talking points. Saddam has more weapons of mass destruction than Hitler ever had. The longer we wait, the more dangerous he becomes. Mm -hmm. John McCain says that. Ted Stevens of Alaska stands up. Now think about in terms of the, you know, the, the parallel with the witnesses, the hysteria. Mm -hmm. a, a grown man, Ted Stevens, stands up in the Senate and says, history will read that the nations that stopped Saddam Hussein saved the world. This is the level of hysteria to which a president can take a grown man. And what happened was, through this strategy, Bush took this nation by the ear and led it right into the sword. Kids should know these things. There are millions of Americans who believe, for example, that when a president is ramping up for a war, you have a patriotic responsibility to support him. And that attitude is killing our young adult children. We become a warrior nation. We bomb everything. We're now bombing people in a manner that's being controlled by a guy sitting in a control room in Nevada mm -hmm. watching the TV images from a drone, unmanned aerial, ve aerial vehicle. And we're killing women and children. You can see it. They take video. He's, he's watching. There they are. Whoosh, boom. We're killing women and children. And by the way, where's the valor in this? Well, nobody's in the drone and the guy's a half a world away. Mm -hmm. um, the people had more power than they realize. But it has, you know, we've got to get away from this notion that, you know, my Marlowe's parents used to say, if they didn't know what they were doing, they wouldn't be in Washington. This is the devotion we had. Mm -hmm. Eisenhower, Len Lease, the Marshall Plan, I thought that we were the greatest. What a lucky kid I thought I was. Mm -hmm. Born by accident of birth into the freest, greatest, most powerful, best, best, best country in the world. And so obviously when we called a war, we were right. And it wasn't until the 70s. <laughs> I mean, I'm a slow learner. Actually 60s, late 60s. I, you know, I'm just afraid that we're going to need a, we need a remedial course on the Constitution and what this means. The framers were right. Separate church and state. Mm -hmm. We do not want a president that talks to God every day and God talks back. They were so smart. Mm -hmm. Don't let you know, if there are people, if they've got God and you don't, that's part of this political dialogue today. I mean, that's the coup de grace. Yeah. You don't love America. You don't respect the troops. You don't want to fight for America. And then the coup de grace, you don't believe in God. It's phony. It's shallow. Mm -hmm. I think God is up there saying, Oi, talk to the person next to you on the bus. Stop talking to me. A little arrogant of me to presume to speak for God, but I mean, that's what's rolling around my head. And, and then I think the, the, um, the business of growing up 
and as I say, it took me a while, longer than it should have. It was around the late 60s that I first interviewed Noam Chomsky. And I said, uh, Professor Chomsky, you know, just what is it you're trying to say in my own clever, elegant way? And he looked at me and he said, never trust the state. What? I mean, I was raised to, you know, the V sign out my uncle's car window on D-Day. Um, my uncle took a bullet in the Battle of the Bulge, showed me the scars. We won. We defeated Hitler. Uh, we were good and right in all things. And that's what got us, you know, we suffer from too much devotion. These are, you know, we have to, we're the people. It should be from the bottom up. That's the whole point. The framers were right. We, I think, were the patriots. You've got to be open to dissent. Otherwise, you know, if there's no dissent, there's no democracy. You can't claim democracy if there's no dissent. And at a time when we need free speech the most, when a president is, uh, uh, we're going to war, because I say so, I have to protect you. And by the way, I have to listen in on your phone calls. And in order to protect you, I'll put people in cages halfway around the world and we'll waterboard them and pull their fingernails out. For Fourth Amendment, search and seizure, cruel and unusual, quaint ideas. It's a wonderful notion, but it's not very practical. This is how easy it is to lose the bedrock, fundamental principle of this Republican democracy. And if Americans aren't aware of that, we will. You know, If nothing lasts forever, then nothing ever will including this wonderful idea of Jeffersonian democracy. <clears throat> and that's why we have to be alert. We have to, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. And if you don't use it, if you don't use your right to free speech, dissent, kicking tires, standing up against City Hall, then you're wasting the blood of the thousands and thousands of young Americans who died on foreign battlefields to protect this right. And all of a sudden you look up and we have the highest officials in this nation turning their back on the Bill of Rights. Honestly, I think if you put the Bill of Rights to a vote, I'm not sure the last administration would pass it. And that's fear. I can convince you that if I don't have this power, yeah, Miranda, sh Miranda, don't make me laugh. We're arguing now about where we should try these people. There's a significant number of people that would just as soon have them tried, you know, in the middle of a jungle and disappeared without any thought of the pain, the agony, the sacrifice, and the blood that went into the shaping of our Constitution. The greatest document, I think, to oversee the affairs of a civilization ever written. And when we're, suddenly you look up and we have an administration that essentially is saying, all men are created equal, unless we're scared. That's not, that's not the framers' vision. It's not my vision. It's not the vision of millions of Americans. But we have enough loud Americans who can promote fear and move us to turn our back on what it is that makes this country different and better. I think, and more noble. 